Hey guys, this is Civil Learning Online and this is fourth lecture on project management. In this lecture, I am going to discuss about dummy activity, their uses, work breakdown structure, and different types of planning in order to draw on the network. So, without any further delay, let's get started. So guys, let's begin our today's lecture and in this lecture we will discuss about dummy activities in detail. In the previous video, I have discussed about the definition of dummy activity uh, and we have learned uh, some basic uh, concept about the dummy activities and here we will read about it, uh, it in detail and uh, we will begin this lecture with the main definition and it says that a dummy is a type of operation in the network which neither requires any time nor any resources but is merely a device to identify a dependence among operations so uh, dummy activities are those activities which does not require any time neither any kind of resources and uh, it is a basically uh, a method of determining the, the dip dependencies it means which activity are to be performed bef uh, earlier uh, in order to com complete our project and such type of uh, meaning is provided by the dummy activities uh, and the second thing is how we can recognize the dummy activity so the, in any ne project network if we see a dotted line or if we have to represent a dummy activity then it it is represented using a dashed arrow and I have uh, so made it clear using a diagram here here you can see that event 2 and event 5 are connected with a dashed arrow line which is repre which representing a dummy activity here and uh, further if I will discuss about this diagram in detail then here we have two sets of operations and they are set 1 has two operation A and B and the if operation A is await delivery of new machine means a new machine is delivered second is install new machine new machine is in, to be installed and the set 2 is remove the existing machine and uh, D is uh, D says that dispose of existing machine uh, here we can see that uh, these two the set 1 operations and set 2 operations set 2 operations can be performed simultaneously means one after another but here are depend uh, here are dependencies between these two set of activities which is uh, I, as i already told you that uh, until new machine is delivered we have received the delivery of new machine we cannot remove the uh, we cannot displace the uh, old machine which we are using and uh, in such case dummy activity comes into consideration now we will see further the uses of dummies in a project network so guys let's move to our the uses of dummies so in a project network a dummy dummies or the dummies activities are provided mainly fulfill two purposes that are for gram grammatical purpose and the second one is logical purpose and moving to our the grammatical purpose it says that a dummy is used to prevent two errors having common beginning and end points. You all know that a project network consists of number of activities and those activities are, are ter terminates and originates from an event. So the, we may have two events, two events which, which may have two activities where having same start point and same end point. And in that case, it may not give us clear identification about the activity because the, the there are two activities but both have same starting point and end point in that case it is going to create confusion so in that case dummy activity comes into action in uh, as you can see here we i have drawn a two diagrams here and the first one is here, here it says that ambiguous representation it is so because there are two events but and two activities and they both both the activities are having same starting and end points so it is going to create confusion that's why we we do not uh, approve such type of representation in uh, of uh, in a project network and uh, what we do we represent is at uh, uh, like this in this second figure as it is shown here grammatically clear representation is because 
see here we what we have done here there are two activities a and b and uh, we uh, we have splitted these uh, it the act in the terminals of these both activities using a dummy activity and they ha they are now terminating at two different points and there is no any requirement of times and resources so in such case we use dummy activities in order to uh, uh, provide a unique identification to two different activities now the second purpose for providing dummy activity is uh, logical purpose and uh, logical purpose let me read it out the logical purpose says that a dummy is used to give logical logical clear representation in a network having an activity common to two set of operation running parallel to each other so you can see here we have a common activity p uh, which is terminating in two different events one and two so in order to reduce the confusion or uh, um, remove the confusion while drawing the project diagram what we do we rewrite we redraw this activity as p1 and p2 and uh, draw a separate event that is p or oh, sorry that is this we draw a separate activity p uh, and uh, we terminating it at and splitting it into two different uh, sub uh, activities and uh, in this way we represent the uh, dummy activity in the project network now let's move to our second topic so guys here comes work breakdown structure it is very important from the exam point of view because this if a definition and we may be asked to, uh, to write a short paragraph about work by work breakdown structure in exam so let's begin read, uh, let me read out the points which i have picked out pick out for you and uh, while writing about the work breakdown structure in exam try writing it in points uh, it will help you to secure good marks in exam so the first point is work breakdown structure or schedule is a pictorial representation of the entire program uh, it is similar to the the what we do in the project network like we have to uh, in, 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 start our project from the uh, uh, act, act event which is uh, uh, which are to be done uh, early first and then we proceed accordingly so it is the same thing we have to do in a sequence and the second thing is it is a preliminary preliminary diagram illustrating the way in which all the supporting objective go together and means to ensure the attainment of the major activities means it is preliminary diagram um, a work breakdown structure are uh, to be carried out before carrying out any project so that we be we will have an idea that what are source of activity we are about to do uh, in order to achieve our goal or the complete the project and uh, and uh, ensure the attainment of major activity major activities are to be performed and we uh, make a clear representation while drawing the work breakdown structure of uh, major activities and the third point it is, it is more essential in complex project consisting of hundreds of events and activities yes as i already told you it is the work background structures are constructed before starting any project uh, so and uh, it is very essential because we may ha have to face a project on site which uh, we, which will consist of hundreds of activities or events and the third point say fourth point says that in work breakdown structure the top bottom approach is plan of to planning is adopted such an approach ensures that the total project is fully planned and that all derivative plans contribute directly to the desired end objective this point says that suppose we are starting a project means all the project will be in a sequential order means the project which are to be performed before uh, in uh, starting then that should be performed in starting and the second project which are to be performed after that will precede it uh, and in, it will be done in a manner uh, so that and uh, there we may have some projects or the uh, sorry activities or events which we uh, which um, uh, may have some smaller portion means uh, suppose we have a project here and it has two different smaller pro derivatives means small parts which are to be performed so that we will contribute we will move to the second project in such uh, projects uh, are to be represented in this work breakdown structure and the and the purp whole all the purp and the purpose of all these uh, projects or the sorry activities and events will be same to g measure get our end desired objective example we have to build a house then what we do first of all uh, we do the surveying 
then layout designing and all these activities are to be, we do in a sequence order so that and our end objective is to build a house and uh, in between that uh, project between that uh, uh, stages of uh, building our house we have to uh, get supply of cements sands Do, those are derivatives of uh, our construction project but uh, the end objective is the same we have to build a house that that is the for the clarification for the fourth point and the fifth point says that the major end items are then divided into their sub components parts like as i said you told you that we have this so major com suppose this is our major component then if we divide this into uh, two different smaller parts then that that is our sub components if we further divide this then that will be our sub systems systems components and the component parts are further divided into their more detailed units these are just a div division of the uh, of a major component and uh, this was all about work breakdown structure I, and i in this lecture i am going to discuss uh, add one more topic and that is uh, planning for network construction so in a uh, before drawing a project network we have to do some planning uh, in order to initiate our uh, network project So whenever we are about to draw a network, we have to do some pre-planning in order to initiate the network and uh, it, it is done in three ways and it is a very, also very important from the exam point of view because you may have a question to uh, uh, distinguish between the forward planning, backward planning or combined planning, third one is combined planning and uh, I am going to discuss about all these methods of planning to draw a network one by one and the first one is forward planning so forward planning in this method the planner starts from the initial event and built up the event and activity activities logically and sequentially until the end event is reached so uh, forward planning as the name suggests we have to begin from starting till end end objective we have to start from initial event initial event and then our final event and then we will reach the final event and this is what we do in forward planning and while doing the forward planning a planner asks some question which are what event comes next first of all if we have select come to know that we have to do uh, do a event perform a event before starting any other activity then uh, what the second question will and then we have to ask the question that if we have once we have completed in ev this event then what we will be our second event that is what the forward planning, forward planning requires a question and the second thing is what are different events means we have we also know, need to know the different events which are to be performed while uh, perform drawing a network uh, in forward planning and the second and the third question is what event can take place concurrently we also have we need to have an idea it can be uh, based upon our field experience and thus the question we need to ask is what events can be to take concurrently means so we have what are the what sorts of event we can perform together we need to have know the have that uh, that much idea and the second type of planning is backward planning in this method the planner start with the end event and arranges the event and activities until the initial event is reached means in forward planning we initiated from the initial event and then finally reach to the end event but this is act exactly opposite of the forward planning that is backward planning and uh, it is same as the name suggests backward planning means we have to start from the end event and then we will proceed to the initial event and uh, the second point says that keeping the goal in view the planner asks himself if we want to achieve this what event and activity should have taken place means we have to uh, suppose if we plan uh, to build a house that is our final goal then for build a house what what sorts of activities we are to perform uh, if we Im imagine these those and prepare a network then that will be our backward planning and the third one is combined planning so combined planning says that in practice a combination of both forward planning and backward planning is followed to create a satisfactory network 
so uh, in if we talk about uh, what what type of planning is basically uh, used in um, drawing a network in practically in field then that is combined planning so in combined planning it is the combination of both forward planning means uh, we need to know what sorts of activities should be done to achieve our goal similarly in backward planning what we learned that we have need to know what sorts of activities are to be performed to uh, in order to complete that goal and uh, and uh, finally we will re return to the in, uh, initial event and uh, the that is what the combined planning uh, says and the second point about the combined planning is in this method a planner must ask himself the following question what are the questions what event or events must be completed before the particular event can start means what event should what sorts of event are the successor events uh, so that once we have completed that then we will start uh, on another event and uh, second point is second question is what event or events follow this means uh, what are the events will come after the uh, these preceding events and the third is what activities can be companies accompanied simultaneously the question is similar uh, to the what we do in the forward planning and the third question third question says that uh, what are the what are the activities which are to be accompanied simultaneously means uh, one after another thanks for watching this video if you guys find this video to be helpful then do like and share this video and in the next video i will discuss about further lectures of uh, project management so Thanks for watching this video. If you guys find this video to be helpful to you guys, then do like and share this video and uh, do, do subscribe the channel if you want, do not want to miss any updates. And in the next video, I will discuss about further topics of project management. So till then, stay safe and take care of yourself.